Hello, everyone. Let me get us set up here. Happy Friday. It is time for some lovely beating to end our week. And we're doing so with, with some nice gems today. I've got an entire palette of kyanite that we're going to be working with in just a moment. But let's give folks a second to join us. Wave hello in the comments if you are here. Our temperatures have dropped for, for Bay Area standards that our temperatures have dropped. So we're just trying to stay warm. And so it just feels like a perfect day to do just some go inside, do some nice relaxing beating. So I hope you'll join me, maybe make along. And I hope what I do today inspires you. We're, keep, we're keeping it pretty simple, mixing some stringing and wire work. And you're just gonna kind of talk working with nice stones and kind of what comes along with that. Um, I also just want to give some of these stones a shout out that don't typically get featured in our classes. And we'll talk about care of the stones and hopefully put together a lovely piece. It's kind of semi design on the fly. I have an idea of what I want to do today, but it might be kind of semi design on the fly. All right, looks like folks are here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get today's class. Ooh, I need a background, hold on. All righty. I'm a little out of practice teaching classes for this shop. So you might need to let me know if I go off camera, but I will do my best to keep, keep us in line. So here is what we're working with today. Oh, thank you, Lynn. I thought I did that and I clearly did not. So I've just got all sorts of gorgeous check glass here. I, I'm so lying to you. I've got all sorts of gorgeous kyanite here um, in a mix of shapes right here at the bottom of my palette. I paired it with some aquamarine. <laughs> Are you laughing at, at my brain clearly shutting off before the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> lids here in the house um we got aquamarine that i was in this nice dark mix that i thought paired really nicely with the kyanite and added some of those light tones and then i went for all pewter findings i think kyanite pairs well with a lot of different metal options but there's something about the pewter that really called to me and i'm designing this this piece for myself to be able to wear maybe i'll wear it at the maker table this weekend at the whole bead show um and the pewter has been calling to me lately so I've got some of the wavy spacers. Um, got a big bag of those. What's coming that many back? Wow, 15 piece set of those. That's awesome. Got a toggle clasp and pewter, and then some little smaller nugget spacers as well. I have an idea of how we're gonna put this put this together, but I am I am kind of gonna try to let myself follow the beads as much as I can. So when it comes to high grade stones, one of the first things you'll often find that you have to sort sort through is hole size. They typically do not have huge holes. When you, the, the nice of the stone you work with often will have smaller and smaller holes. And this is for two main reasons. One, the larger the hole you make typically will decrease the strength of the stone. A bead seller once told me, I've said this before, that the strongest bead in the world would be a bead that does not have a hole. You get where I'm going with this? <laughs> so they purposely make holes very small on very nice stones that are typically more fragile. So in the case of kyanite, while it's not a super soft stone, it is considered a somewhat brittle stone based because of the structures of it. So if it's cut well, they cut it along the right grain. Kind of some of the stones actually even cut it against two different grains. And if you cut it against the right grain, it keeps much better structural integrity. As far as care of a stone, you don't want to, you kind of want to be gentle for caring for a stone like this. You want to use like a soft cloth. Essentially, you don't want to get give any sort of solutions or cleaning that involves any sort of uh, machine or anything like that. Keep it nice and gentle for a stone like this. So here I've got the center drilled kyanite. I've already tested out that I'm able to get some pretty standard stringing wire and 
I think I just texted 24 gauge wire through these. So I should be set to make these the center of the necklace because when it comes to whole size, you wanna, you wanna respect um, the bead as it is. So that means if it has a smaller drill hole, do not use a stringy material or wire that is a lot thicker because you, you kind of know when it's off. You'll start putting it in, it'll, it'll pretty much immediately get stuck. And then sometimes it's stuck and like <laughs> there's not much you could do. Um, but that's how you know you're using a material that's too large for that bead. And if say you were to force the wire through, you have, you have now put, in, put pressure on the bead from the inside and have made it more prone to cracking. So it might crack while you're working with it. It might crack pretty easily if the piece was dropped one day. If you do not put pressure on, you the bead should be a whole lot happier with you. So let us so let me kind of lay out what I was thinking for the kyanite. I, these are drilled at the center, so they're kind of more gonna more so lay like this unless I intentionally bend them. So that'll be a choice. I was envisioning them being, they were going to be kind of in a row. So we'll start there. Um, I have some ideas for how we can keep them kind of in line because they're going to want to turn as we start working with them. I've got these lovely eight millimeter kyanite coins. This is all natural kyanite we have in the shop. I highly recommend checking all the lovely kyanite we have on the website or on the app. Anything I'm using in today's class, I have linked in the class kits page that Jesse can that Jesse's drop in. It's also I've also lots of links in this post as well. But I was thinking that this would be some form here, in, and then we'll mix in some of our spacers and finish it off with some of this gorgeous dark mix aquamarine in the three and a half millimeter size. Uh, Sue brings up a great point about uh, storing gemstones. In general, it is always a good idea to, to not store your stones in direct sunlight. That's, I think I, it must be part of the reason why jewelry boxes are often drawers that like do not let light in. That is really good for your stones. Let them get their daylight when you're wearing them and then put them right back in so they have as long a life as possible. Certain stones are more affected by sunlight than others. I haven't heard about kyanite color changing, but Sue, if you have info on that, would love to hear it. But there's certain stones that that will quit pretty quickly react to sunlight, as well as certain dyed stones also can start changing color with excessive sunlight. Nothing to be scared of. It's just, just knowledge that you should have as a jewelry maker so that you can pass on to your clients and just ultimately do what you can to protect the, the lovely creations you make. We got two spacers. I want to put a spacer between these so that when we have some space for wire wraps, and we might end up doing this twice because I want to test it out with these, uh, I think they're like 10 millimeter little potato chips, but I don't know if it'll lend well to when we ultimately add wire. So we have these and if it doesn't work, we're going to take it right apart and I'm just going to try it with the smaller spacers. These are the smaller size nugget spacers from TRCast that we recently got into the shop that are lovely. Who is a kyanite fan here? I, I think Lynn's a kyanite fan. Yeah. Do you have, do you have kyanite jewelry, Lynn? Yes, I bet it's knotted. I feel like you, you always knot your nicest stones. Black lava beads and kyanite. That's a lovely contrast. Someone had. I, I want to hear all the kyanite ideas. See, I. I love green kyanite. I also love orange kyanite. It's, it's a little. The kyanite even I've heard comes in pink. It comes in all sorts of colors. It's gorgeous. 
So I'm grabbing some 24 gauge German style wire. You can get these by the quarter pound spool or the coil from the shop. We just restocked all that, all that goodness. <laughs> Wanda. <laughs> so this is 24 gauge German style wire, pretty thin gauge wire. Um, but as I we was saying, the whole size on these beads is not huge. My other options I have for myself here are 20 gauge, 18. So maybe a 22 would go through. I'm skeptical. Uh, uh, maybe. We could, it, it would be nice to use a base of a thicker gauge. You kind of, a good rule of thumb is use the largest wire you can, but don't push it. So we'll do a quick test with, this is 20 gauge. You can straighten it out using your fingers or some nylon jaw pliers. It just helps warm up the wire a bit, make it a little more pliable. Anita's joining from South Africa. Some of the most beautiful kyanite, and I believe a lot of the orange kyanite is found in South Africa. Um, they actually find kyanite in the States as well as Brazil, parts of Europe. It's kind of found all over. Geologists use it to like actually identify types of rock. Like if they see kyanite, they know that it's like a certain type of rock and that's helpful info to them and something a little bit beyond my pay grade. All right, so let's see how this 20 gauge does because we're gonna use it as the base for the Xenergil kyanite. And then I was planning to use the 24 gauge to do the wraps between the beads. This is a similar technique um, to what Sarah showed last week. Okay, so let's just test all the beads because sometimes you'll get some variance. But if it looks like that one's getting is a little bit not happy, which worries me a little bit. See how it's like not really want, want your, your bead should freely spin. Okay, looks like it might, it might have just been a small kink in the wire. But if my beads are freely spinning, then like that's, I'm not worried. You should be able to play Twister with your beads. <laughs> Aren't those gorgeous? All right, so we've done the test. Now that we put them all on the string, we're gonna take them right off. I can tell that 22 would be like a happy medium for these particular beads. I'm using what I got around me today. So we're gonna start by making some a wire wrap loop. So I'm coming with my round nose pliers, giving myself just a couple inches. That's really plenty of wire to make my wire wraps. So I've got a 90 degree bend here. And then let's do a decently sized loop. I don't, I'm not feeling a small loop today. So let's come to the middle of the pliers. That'll be easy to remember. Let's go to the middle. And I'm gonna use a good amount of pressure from my pointer finger here to bring that wire all the way around. And then I'm gonna rotate those round nose so that I can then pull this loose, this smaller wire to complete my loop. You see, I'm a little off center, so I can just kind of what Mele calls break the neck a little bit to bring it back to center. So I have a lovely loop there and can finish my wire wrap. So I'm, these are some flat nose pliers. And again, I'm using lots of pressure right by where the wires join, where the wire kind of joins in so that I can keep my coiling really nice. You can also hold this with pliers and can give, it can give you some more leverage. Sometimes it doesn't, when I'm getting going, it doesn't really help me. But as I continue, it does tend to give me some leverage. So it's just to pull that around. Why don't we do three? In case no one's told you, you can do what you want in your drawer making. So why not do three loops there? Because I love the look of nice little coils. And we'll tuck in our end of wire. See how it's like protruding just a little bit. It doesn't look so nice. Take any of your flat nose. Whoop, but don't do what I just did. See how I, I didn't wasn't looking where I was where I was kind of pressing in and it just pushed the wire down. I should be able to correct that by gently bringing that back up. 
and let's see if it'll forgive me and let me tuck it in. I think we're good. And then you can always squeeze your coil gently, tuck it together a little bit more if you want it to be even nicer. And that's not too bad. Next, we're gonna grab our kyanite. And we, you guys, we might be doing this twice. I said, as I was, as I was saying, let's pick the order. Some of the sets that we have in the shop are a little bit more varied. Maybe I should have grabbed one that's more varied, but I just grabbed a random one because I intentionally want it to have like a slight graduated look to it. And let's see, I really want this potato chip spacer to work. Hmm, what is my wire gonna be? Well, only one way to find out. I'm worried it might get in the way of my wire wraps to come, but I am obsessed with these spacers. They're great for like, especially beads of similar sizes. Like say you put like a 10 millimeter bead with that wavy spacer. It's gorgeous. Grab some 10 millimeter art deco cuts from the shop and it'll be really, really nice. All right. Is anyone else creating today or trying to find some inspiration? All right, see how it's kind of going all over the place? It's kind of what I expected, that's okay. Let's go ahead and finish our wrapping. So we need to give ourselves enough gap for a few loops, maybe something like that in the middle of my pliers. And I wanna keep this, let's see, my loop is facing me right now. That means I need to turn it 90 degrees so that my next loop matches it because this wire is going to bend back towards us. So bend that, do the same process we went through to make our wire wrap loop. And see how our loops are being are both along the same plane of sorts. I promise I won't get any more mathy than that. And let's finish that off. So this is similar to what Sarah was talking about, where you can, you can Continue this with the same wire. So if I just start with a longer piece of wire, I could then just wrap that back across and even return if my wire was long enough. That's not what I'm doing today, clearly, because it works just fine both ways. It's probably a little, ooh, let's see if I made this too tight for myself. Interesting. So first thing we've already learned here is that we need these to have enough space because even if they're like too locked in on each other, that is already one thing that a more brittle stone is really not going to like in the long term. So where am I at now? I don't have a lot I can do to correct that other than if I can pry out a little bit of my wire but that's gonna be pretty difficult so i'm gonna keep going for now but gonna pass on that learning to you if you do a project like this this these have no movement that's not ideal but we're okay right now as long as we can get them to be in line i will be okay for the moment it's kind of nice that way So because I did have that much tension, they aren't actually moving too much on me and like you could just wear it, but I still wanna try out the wire technique on these lovely kyanites. So I'm gonna come in with a 24 gauge wire. Give myself maybe a couple feet here. Ooh, Susie's working on amethyst necklace. Who here has tried some of the kyanite from the shop? I've got like a nice collection right now. Hishis, center cuts, lots of, I think a few different sizes of coins. We have some like 12 millimeter rounds that are really cool. That are, we have some that are these, one of the enhanced ones, a little darkened. And we have some 
natural ones as well. They're so beautiful. I was thinking of involving this as a focal at some point, but I didn't get that far. So for now, it'll just be this tiny sphere. <laughs> All right, so what I just did was I ran my, my fingers through the wire to get it a little bit warmed up and straightened out. And we're gonna use one of our loops as an anchor point. This is something Sarah was showing last Friday. It's a really nice way to get wrapping started. So I just put it through the loop a little bit and it's a lot easier to hold as I then start my loops. I'm gonna do a couple loops. And what we'll ultimately do is cut off all that extra wire. And there's a lot of ways you can do this sort of wrap. We're gonna try one now and see how we like it. My main goal ultimately that it's wrapped enough that the pieces are gonna stay in place. So I'm gonna wrap up and over. And just keep doing that all along. So what I'm kind of doing is I'm going over my spacer bead and then back under, over, and at some point kind of crossing back over. Is that true? Let's see where I'm coming back. There we go. Actually, I stayed on one side of the spacer with my wire. So I ended up... Okay, so I did the same thing for all of them. I used the far side of the spacer. So I'm coming from here. I skipped over that spacer while I did the wrap so that this is coming to the right-hand side of that potato chip. And ultimately, I'm back to start to a starting point. So here's where we're at so far. I don't want to cover up too much of the kinite, but I think it wouldn't hurt to continue. So I'm intentionally letting myself reverse directions here. You don't have to. If you it depends on where your wire comes out here. So if I if you manage to get if you can kind of switch directions with your wire you could then kind of backtrack. It's not quite as easy to get going because this wire naturally wants to go come down this way, which makes more sense to come here. You could, I guess the way to adjust that would have been where I started wrapping. If I did the opposite, my result here would have shifted. So I'm gonna come over and follow the same patterns. Sorry, I was off camera. Everything's getting a little bit more tense, so I can already tell I'm not I'm not super happy with what my what I've done. But generally my beads are okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and anchor down that wire by giving it a couple loops on the far side as well. And then we'll assess. And figure out if we're gonna go with plan B. So I'm gonna cut off all my extra wires on this side, see if I need to tuck in anything. And let's see how we did. I actually kind of like the look of it. They're not perfectly in line, which was my intent was the whole point of the wire wrapping is I was one of them like perfect soldiers in a row, but there's a little bit of like a free form look to this that I'm not minding. So I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna touch that just this moment. They're also, they are gonna stay in place pretty well because they kind of each have a little, little hug of wire around them. So it's kind of a cool look. I 
I want this one to turn just a little bit, but there's a risk if I do so of messing up a little bit of my wire wraps or putting more pressure on the bead. So let's just, Sam, leave it as is. <laughs> it's actually quite pretty. It lets the light hit it in multiple ways, which is, which is cool. A little bit more of a handmade freeform look. So let's move on to our stringing here. It does not have to be stringing, but I thought it'd be pretty as such. You could kind of continue a similar technique with the coins, which would could keep them in line, but I don't really want that like super stiff look to it. So I'm not gonna do that, I don't think. I'm okay if the coins kind of flip around. Once I'm wearing it, they should lay flat against skin anyway. Oh, thanks, Holly. So let me come in. I've got some 0.24 inch beading wire. And we'll always do a quick test on your beads to make sure they're happy. So these are the main two beads I'm going to be using, as well as the aquamarine. I don't know if I've ever made a necklace of kind and aquamarine together. I'm very excited to wear this. Find the holes on your small beads. Okay, those are fine. We're good to make up what we like for the rest of our piece here. For a clasp, I have this pewter toggle. All my findings here, if you weren't here at the beginning, are tear cast in pewter, which is this darker silver tone because they're actually not silver plated. They're just the base pewter that's been antiqued. So it creates a really nice depth that I thought would look nice, be a nice complement to the kyanite. So let's start stringing. I think I am going to put the clasp in the back, so I don't need crazy long piece of wire here. So even if I give myself about a foot, just over a foot, that'll be plenty. Because my, usually from necklaces for myself, I do like 22 inches. So if I make sure to make each strand about 10 inches, that will be fine. Do I have my, my ruler nearby me? No, it's on my, my desk. All right, so let's just start with, lots of ways we can start this. Let's just crimp it really quick. I've got some number two crimp tubes, which work with this size wire. This is the 0.24 inch beading wire. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring those together. And we'll do some basic crimping technique. This is going to be plenty strong. I don't actually need a beading wire this thick for the type of bead I'm using. But since it does work, you can't, it doesn't hurt to use it. It just gives the piece a little bit more strength. Aw, Lynn. Let's see how, how my estimated measure was. I've got yeah, I'll be, do be able to do about, <laughs> will I? We're going to cut a new piece. <laughs> I didn't give myself enough room for actually crimping. So there's 12 inches. And then I like to give myself about two inches per crimp. So let's add on four inches to that. So we'll have more than enough. Take two. Alrighty, so I'm kind of excited to figure out what the pattern is going to be at the, at the base of the necklace. I pretty much know that the back of the necklace is I'm just going to feature like a whole strand of aquamarine. I'm not going to really mess with it too much. Maybe we'll mix in some occasional spacers, but I'm not, I'm not overthinking that one. The stone is kind of beautiful enough as is. So... You have two options. You can always use a jump ring or you can attach it right to your wire wrap loop. In this case, why not? So I have my crimp bead on there. Add on front of my necklace and we'll go ahead and crimp. So my goal being here to keep my wires separate. This is, if you struggle with basic crimp technique, I understand, but it is, it is definitely worthwhile to work on it because it'll add really good structural integrity <clears throat> to your pieces. 
So I like to leave a loop of about that size. You can use a wire guardian, guardian if you like. And I'm gonna go now look where my wires are and try to separate them so they're not crossing in the crimp tube. So you kind of spread those apart and I'm gonna use the lower notch but that has the little micro notch in it of my crimper tool. I like to kind of get it in line first and then I, I, mean, I usually need to then mess with my wire. So I already crossed itself. So I've uncrossed it and I'm gonna go ahead and do my first crimp. So what you should have is a wire on either side of your crimp tube. And now we're gonna use the top part of the crimper to bring those two together. Slowly but surely, sometimes it takes a couple and it'll make a little tiny micro seam in your crimp bead. And that is not gonna go anywhere. That crimp bead has got you covered. So you actually can go ahead and trim off your extra wire without messing with your crimp bead. And now we just get to string, it's the fun part. Now you got your technique done, let's string up this piece. So I have no idea what I wanna do, but I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a sense. I think I'll just go ahead and start with a kyanite here. This could be a team design. This could literally as simple as just kyanite spacer, kyanite spacer, but that almost feels too easy. But you know, it's probably gonna look nice, isn't it? So that's what it looks like, a little spacer between it. It's a little heavier than I was expecting with that, with that spacer there. Let's see how it looks like with the, with the rest of it. I have heard that some folks are coming out to the whole bead show, which is literally tomorrow. Shira's is manning day one with me. We got this, the biggest box in the world from Beadalon that has like a dozen sets of pliers that Wyatt himself sent us from a class he taught recently. So he's loaning those to us. And then he sent us like big old spools of German style wire elastic, cord, memory wire. The whole team of Bilan did not want us to be without. All right, so here's what that looks like. And then from there, it would probably just kind of go into the aquamarine. I don't like it at all. So I think we need to mix in some of the aquamarines that are introduced a little bit earlier in the design. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Lynn? <laughs> I, don't we all take apart our pieces as we make them? I know I'm not the only one. All right, let's try. I think I like string up a whole piece, take the whole thing apart. All right, what if we, let's just try something else. What if I do a couple? Oh, come on, I can already stop. <laughs> the fight begins with these itty bitties. I'm trying to spot them on camera too. All right, so I did a kyanite, two aquamarines, metal spacer. I don't think I'm gonna like this either. Oh, I have I have a third idea, but let's. I have to give the second idea. It's it's a moment. Oh my god, these aquamarines. I think the kyanite. I think the spacer would look better between the aquamarine and the kyanite. Not in the middle of the aquamarine. <laughs> I'm gonna pull my hair out doing these one at a time. Okay. Let's see. See, it, it's still, you can tell it like we're getting closer. It's actually not that bad, is it? Lynn, what do you think? I could put the spacers on, but like on either side of the aquamarine before the kyanite. 
What do you think? I need, you're, you're so good at this sort of thing. Should I just do the aquamarine? Jesse, what do you think? I like the silver. You like the silver edition? Okay. I do. You know, I love. I always love a spacer. So what if I do? Oh, I also have another idea. What if we <laughs> use more spacers and alter it? Just to, I the love look of stacking up space spacers is fun. So if we do two spacers, but then don't repeat it quite yet. We go with spacers, and then aquamarine. Say we did like two or three aquamarines. It's amazing the amount of decisions we make as jewelry makers. Like these are all things going through our minds that you don't see in the final piece. You don't know that 17 things were tried. It, yeah, it mirrors it. I think I like that. So then the idea was then I could then go back to the doing two, two little nugget spacers. <laughs> Do you guys find this interesting? <laughs> this is how, this is like always how my designs go. I like, I always I need to see, I need, I need to see it actually. I can't just lay it out on a beadboard. So let's see. We're gonna, I think, I think I'm okay with this. It doesn't feel, my first thing was that it felt heavy with the spacers constantly. But now there's like a f over an inch between those spacers. I'm a lot happier. So let's just try this. We'll run with it for now. We would also put these kinites in little pairs. So we might end up just using four. Like that could be the section. I'm being indecisive again. <laughs> Um, all right, let me just pause for a second, take a sip of water before I start messing with it. Give you guys a close up. This just feels so silly. I didn't think this part of the necklace would be this hard. This just feels harder than the wire wrapping. Are we all good to proceed? <laughs> Maybe. I'm overthinking this because I have like so many possibilities we could do. So then I guess it would be aquamarine. And then we could mix the spacers into the aquamarine from there. And maybe we'll do a bonus kinite higher up in the necklace to give the eye something to go to. So let's get a bunch of these itty bitties ready to go. And I'm just gonna try to randomly pick them. I don't wanna have I don't wanna overthink using a mixed stone like this. If I do it pretty randomly, it should create a nice effect by the end. All right, I think I'm okay with that. So let's just continue with the aquamarine for a bit. Danetta, I have your order. Danetta want, wanted me to bring her beads to the whole bead show. So her, Danetta, your order's in my car with all the beetle on tools. So may, are you going to, I hope the idea behind that is that you can then bead with the beads at the whole bead show at the maker table. Instant gratification. So I'm just going to do a section of aquamarine and then mix in other goodies to it. So we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do 10 and then maybe a spacer. And we can just periodically add in the spacers. A little pop of metal. I can't believe how you should, I, I intentionally picked a three and a half millimeter ones, not the smaller ones we have, to make it easier for myself on the class. <laughs> and I still, and it's still. <laughs> All right, that's 10. It's still hard for Samuel. Let's do one of our little nuggets. I could actually do two nuggets. I might have to go grab more spacers, but I could do two to keep that theme going. 
Let's see if we think we need it. Here's a close up. I think I think it's nice because every time beads I'll do a spacer, I do not have enough spacers out. Let's see if I can grab some more. Which bead is this? All right, if you're curious, it's the Freeform Nugget Spacer 20 piece set. So, so we're currently we use six on this side already. We got four more we could use then. That's kind of a little close. Eh, we'll make it work. Sometimes it's fun having creative constraints. Because I could use the Kyanite coin instead at some point and then need, need fewer spacers. Also, if I was using a slightly less thick beading wire, these would go on a little quicker, but only slightly. This beading wire is just about the biggest I can fit on a bead like this. Um, I might not go up this entire side. I think it that might not be a, a best use of our time here. Also, we'll just do a section here. Let's see how we're doing on time, it's four o'clock. Because I am also curious if there's other things we want to try with the kyanite. If we have some of, because I do think like it's always nice to have like quick little matching earrings or something. Oh my gosh, these itty, these little bitties. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank goodness. I really had too much faith in myself of being able to do these on camera, because normally I string these right in front of my eyes. So let's do a kyanite coin this time. And let's, let's challenge Sam. I'm going to raise the camera a bit to do some speed stringing. He says he can't find the first hole. <laughs> this is almost comical at this point, y'all. Um, we are making Christine with kyanite. So I've got some of the really nice kyanite in from the shop. We've got lots of shapes of it, but these centered ovals have been calling to me forever. So we're putting them to good use in a necklace that I'm hoping I can wear at whole bead tomorrow. Gotta have some new jewelry for it. Uh, Tracy at Tierka sent us a whole tray of goodies so if you're coming out, you can come pick out some tear cast complimentary of Tracy. I asked her to send like a little collection of various buttons and toggles. I think she sent a lot of like the woodland stuff. So if you come, you're gonna you might end up with some free beads. I'm gonna try to bring some some of the my mixed check glass strands so folks can dig through those. And literally, it's gonna be the first time we're beating in person as the shop. Like we, the shop has never done an in-person event. It really, I've been doing the shop for 10 years, but really in the form that like really doing it since like pandemic times. So we haven't had a chance to do something like this until now. So I know Cindy is coming down, I think for, I think one night. She really wanted to, we were talking about doing like the Alcatraz at night experience. We were talking about that in Hardwired and especially when Sarah was coming for his little spooky experience. But I looked it up, it leaves at like four o'clock. So literally during the show, and there also weren't any tickets left for this weekend anyway. So definitely uh, that didn't work. But maybe one day. If you are coming, please let me know. So I like know to look out for you. I think the table might be kind of in the center of the show. It's not a big, big beat show. So we're gonna have a bunch of round tables in the middle and all the all our tools and everything laid out. I think Shara's gonna bring some candy. She's like, we need candy. <laughs> um, and so just come join us for us however long you like. Um, and if you are not local, um, we are gonna try to involve you as well. We're gonna try to go live 
maybe maybe I'll go do do a live each day and go see what everyone's making. Could do I don't know. We could do some from some beating a beating class from there potentially. All right, we have two, four, six, eight. We can use two more spacers on this side. We definitely need to fill more length, but I'm gonna pause here because I'm going crazy with these itty bitties, especially while I'm feeling the pressure of camera. We have a decent bit of length. So currently we're at just, just of our strand portion. We're actually at seven and a half inches. We're not far off. So if we do some quick math, this is about two and a half inches for our focal. I have seven and a half. So if I were to leave it as is, that's 15 plus two and a half. This is a little bit short, which is why I definitely want to get the seven and a half up to 10. We're close, aren't we? Should we just finish it? It's only two and a half inches. How long could that take me? We just might not finish the other side on camera, but let's like, let's finish one side and see how it looks with our toggle. You might get a surprise appearance from Jesse or Rachel. Lynn will be hosting on Sunday with me. Lynn, do you have any projects you are working on? What? Do you have any projects you're working on these days? I might find something to work on. Otherwise, we have we definitely have some beads. And you can, and of course, I think Ava is hoping that you might like wander the show, go find something you like, and then you can bring it to the maker table and make something with it there on the spot, which does sound fun. I don't think she's ever had a table like this at the, class, at the show. They have classes they host that you can sign up for, but this is, feels a little different. The table's also totally free. That was kind of funny. I went on the whole bead website. It's, it lists Sam's Beach up as a vendor. Uh, we're very much not a vendor. We are there. We are there to create and bead together. I met like a whole bunch of people in the community when I was at Bead Fest. That was amazing. It really meant a lot to me. Just how excited folks were. Um, Maybe maybe feel very special, and we just got and I actually got to chat with so many so many of you in person. Lots of selfies were taken. So folks, don't let remember remind us to take to take uh, photos, okay? Because I'll forget. Lynn, are you good at remembering to take photos? Uh, try. <laughs> You're more organized than I. I love the tone that they just responded. <laughs> she said, yeah. <laughs> All of our brains work in different ways. All right, let's see how we're doing here. This is one of the simplest, I think one of the simpler projects we've done, but I, I always like mixing together stringing and wire in a piece. Like Sarah is right, you don't need to use every technique in your arsenal to make something beautiful. But in this case, we did we did do some nice. I tend to always kind of focus a lot of my energy on the front of the piece. Oh my gosh, we did it, y'all! We're up to ten inches. We can crimp on a toggle. Is there a technical side of which uh, for a toggle? Like, do you guys get what I'm saying? Like to put the bar versus the loop. Does it matter? Do you do you do it consistently? The piece is fairly reversible. Oh, this is nifty. How we wrapped it, one side doesn't have all the wire on it. So I can wear it like this if I want it, which really helps feature the kyanite nicely. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and attach my toggle right to my stringing wire. It's gonna be a nice secure attachment versus using a jump ring. And get that to a tension that I like. 
is always a nice tricky balance to figure out. You want your piece to feel like it still has some room for movement, so I'm going to loosen it just a little bit. That should be good. And then get my loop. And this is where you just kind of have to do your best to uncross your wires. I'm just trying to see if I can follow the path of it. Don't, sometimes this doesn't happen perfectly. That's okay. I think I uncrossed it. So I'm going to come in to do the same crimping technique that we started with. Crimp one. You should see a tiny piece of macaroni. Out of my way, toggle. And finish that off. We've done one side of the necklace. I don't think I'll subject you to the second half of this moment because I'm curious if you want to make a quick matching pair of earrings. I might, I have this bead and I could go grab a second one if I, first when I want to make a second one. But essentially this is what the necklace will look like. Mirrored, of course, back to the other side. I really actually like how it came out with the spacers and the kyanite mixed all up. It looks very, it feels more intentional. So let's pause there for the necklace. I think we're pretty, hopefully everyone feels okay about that technique. You can always catch the replay if you wanna review the wire technique. Um, and let's see what we can do. Let's see, kind of the main extra beads we have right now, if I wanna save my five kyanite coins for the necklace, is I've got this guy, I definitely have more wavy spacers and I've got, a, I'm gonna probably have more aqua, a few, a little bit extra aquamarine, but not too much. So we could have fun with those guys. There was something I've been wanting to try. So you guys wanna, if you're okay with me doing a little experiment, I wanted to try that coin technique we did where we wrapped beads around a coin bead. I wanted to see how well that worked around a round bead. So, we're gonna start at the top of our earring with a wire wrap loop. Let's do three wraps and come with our cutter tool. Obviously I will not be wearing these earrings, but someone could wear these earrings. I guess it would make more sense for me making a matching bracelet, but I'm, I'm curious. I could use, actually this could become a focal on a bracelet potentially. A little churched up kyanite bead. This is also a nice size. I feel like I'm, this 12 meter is not too big for a necklace. So here is, got to rack my brain when, how, when, when Sarah brings it back around. Okay. Yeah. So we need to go ahead and make the other wrapped loop, wrapped loop. So this kind of, it'd be, by doing this, it also works as a connector. So maybe I will do, I could make myself a little matching bracelet. All right. So this is the starting point is literally just a bead that's a wrap loop, but then you have a bunch of wire coming out from there. My goal is to encircle the bead in aquamarine. Because maybe it'll be, maybe it'll make the kind of little extra pretty. All right, I'm raising the camera back up. Sorry if I made you dizzy. So that I can hopefully string on should be a little easier to string onto 24 gauge wire because it's a little harder material. So it should kind of find the holes a little better. Yeah, already so much easier. We only need enough to go around half of the beads. So we'll, it'll be a little bit trial and error until we get it to the point that we want. on two more and then check in with the bead. See how its day is going. So I'm gonna wrap it. 
Oh, I put way too many. I could already tell. I guess I... <laughs> Alright, all right, take off at least three. See, this is where, like, I think a two miller bee would be better. These are just, like, a little bit big. But we're going to give them a shot. So you see how there's like not quite space for another bead. Let's just go ahead and wrap. So we're gonna come behind our loop here as best we can do a wrap or two. Let's see if I can squeeze in a second wrap. And then we're gonna continue around the bead with more Aquamarine. When Sarah teaches this, she always emphasizes that you need this part of your wire to be really straight or else the beads are not gonna wanna sit right. So these are some nylon jaw pliers, which are gonna help assist us in straightening it out just a little bit. I think one of the cool things about using like really nice stones in your pieces is that it, even if you're using simpler techniques, it really elevates your jewelry and gives it a really professional look. Um, and I feel so silly that like we carry so many nice stones in the shop and often we don't, I don't feature them in classes. Sometimes it's just because I don't want to like take any of the nice stones off the shelf, honestly, because they come often come in very small batches. But I think it's worthwhile to use them just to kind of show you that how nicely they work up into pieces and especially really nice pieces. Cause I do, I, we all know that like beads make a difference in the final product. Like you can always tell the quality of a bead. So it's no different using like a really nice gemstone bead. I think that's a really nice special look to the final piece. And of course, you know, I like blending gemstones and check glass as well. Looks like today I managed to actually not blend them, which is surprising. For whatever reason, this is looking so not so nice on this side. So hopefully it'll kind of make up for the other side. There's not a ton of room to work in, but I'm gonna go ahead and secure it as best I can by wrapping in around my loop. I can tell it's not super happy with me. and come around to a place where it's easy to cut off the excess. So you should be left. Okay, this is, this is already first learning. Start with larger loops. It'll give you more to anchor from. And Sarah also tends to add a lot more loops, wraps, I mean, before the loop. So give yourself a much larger gap so you can do more wrap loops. That's instantly, definitely one thing I would that would make this easier. I ran out of room on this side of the bead. If I just done more wrap loops, I, that would have remedied it. I kind of just like ran out of room while I was doing it. But let's see how it turned out. It's almost like a little Saturn bead. Reminds me a lot of like one sit that Rachel Malice makes. It's kind of cool. It's different, but it kind of works. If I had, had even more room, I could do it again. Do you guys see what I'm getting at? Like it could have four. Lynn, is that crazy? What? If I, so I have a loop. I currently have two, two sides per se of the bead covered, but I could do that twice more and almost make like a cage around the bead. I think it would work but it does mean I have to uh, start over because <laughs> I don't, have, I don't, yeah, I need, I need more, where at least I need more places to, more room to anchor. Okay, Y'all, do you guys want to try it? Now that we've done, done it once, control Z, let's try it again. Sometimes they did the wire several times and only put the little beads on the very farthest. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I want it like covered in beads. I kind of am in so intrigued by this bead cage idea. I'm sure someone has done this, has figured this out. So I'm gonna start with a little bit more wire this time. I'm gonna grab my 24 gauge German style wire available from the, you can get it from the shop. I really like, I recommend the quarter pound spools because it kind of keeps itself together. And then you have some holes here that you can tuck in the end of your wire to secure it in place. So you theoretically want to do this with one piece of wire. So I'm going to give myself like a foot and a half this time, if not more. And we'll see how it, see how it goes. Right, warm up our wire. Take two to end class for today. Get an experiment that might work. See, Robin, I'm not super versed in classic herringbone. Herringbone. If I was, this probably would like click much quicker for me. There's something about herringbone that's never clicked. That's just because I haven't done it enough. What? Oh, go through the bead itself go multiple the times. Yeah. Versus attaching it on either side. Yeah. I've done that. It would. It would. Yeah. It would work better with wildfire to do it it's, that way. It's thin. Yeah. It and would. Get them going in lots of different directions. That's gene. That's really smart. <laughs> for I think for wire doing an attaching it on either side will work. Yeah. So let's do it that way for now. But someone please try the with wildfire. That is so smart. So we're going to give ourselves a little extra wire this time so that we can make more loops. All right, let's also do lar a larger loop to start. I'm very curious where this experiment goes. So instead of I only remember I only did like three wraps here. We want to do a whole bunch and just give ourselves space. At least, at least six, probably more. I'll tuck those in a little bit. And we'll see what happens. Anyone else fascinated if this is going to do anything? It might not sit right. That is kind of the main thing is like figure out how to get it to sit right and what order to do them in. All right, that will give us more space here. It's about, okay, let's see how, it's a good section of little coils there. And now we can thread on our 12 millimeter kyanite. So there's two options that we have in the shop. This is the enhanced one that's darkened a little bit. Kind of see how the darkness goes through the natural structures of it and kind of tell it's more of an enhanced kyanite. We have a natural one as well that's really beautiful. It's just a couple of dollars more per bead. All right, we now need to mimic that depth. So it's about there on my pliers three quarters of the way up. So three quarters of the way. We'll fold it over. And do the same thing. I am so fascinated if this is going to work. We're gonna do the same exact thing and bring our coils all the way back to the bead. The bead must feel very special that it's getting this much attention, but just kyanite, so it kind of deserves it. This would also work with like a 12 millimeter drook bead. We've got a bunch of those 12 millimeter drook check glass beads. 
no reason you couldn't try this out with those. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Let's just cut the wire off. <laughs> so I do need to straighten out my wire a bit. too much pressure there just correct that a little bit and grab some of our aquamarine if i was a little bit farther away from the kyanite it would help me out a lot so i'm actually going to backtrack my steps by continuing a couple loops i mean three loops so that you see, I'm just a little bit away from the kyanite now, and it should give me a little bit more room for those three and a half millimeter beads to fit. I might not have that luxury to be able to adjust that for all of these, but at least get this started in a good way. Who's still, who's still with us today? Anyone have some fun weekend plans? Let's see, I've got six on, maybe eight, was it? Eight or so? See, that those want to lay so much better already. There's seven. It's a little tight, but I think workable. So I, what I did is I just kind of wrapped it around once and I should be good to go on to my next section. So it should be about seven beads again. And even if the, neck, the, the the bonus two rows that I'm wanting to add don't work, we can just cut them off and then still end with our two rows that we wanted. It's already looking a lot better the second go around. So it's kind of, there's not a, it's not a bad scenario here. And it's just wire. We can cut wire. Uh, I got five beads. Let's see how seven does. Hi, Amelia. How are you? Amelia, I can't believe you don't live in Hawaii anymore. I don't know how you left. I feel like people don't come back from Hawaii. All right, so I am attached, securing as best I can, and coming out this direction now. And gonna see what happens now. There's no reason it shouldn't work. I'm still at a pretty good, little farther, but not too far away from the kyanite bead. I'd rather be farther, farther away. It can kind of correct itself as we come in closer. I am definitely using more of these aquamarines than I should, so I might need to go grab a second strand if I want to finish this, both these pieces. But at least I'll have a cool little matching set. So you said, we'll be doing a random live from the bead show. I probably will. Probably not a live sale. That would be probably a little tricky, but we'll probably go live just to like say hello. Oh my God, it's working. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. We need one more bead. Sarah's gonna be so proud. <laughs> A 
already. It's like it's like a little globe, a little spinning globe. So we got our next one on. Gonna go ahead and secure that. Oh my god, it's working! This is exciting. But I keep messing with my wire here. And I don't want those. Those little tiny beads will notice bends in the wire and judge me. Okay. Let's add on our last little section of beads. Anyone else in shock that this is working? It's also been pretty consistently seven beads, I think. I mean, it's not necessary. You're gonna have to adjust based, I don't know, kind of how, how it's looking on your bead and where the wire is kind of laying. That's because this is six. Yeah, I think we can squeeze. Uh, yeah, it wants like half a bead. We'll try to put on one more and let it be a little looser. I'm trying to get that centered. And I'm just securing it again. And cut our wire. Oh my God. Yo, what did we just do? Oh my gosh, it works. So there's no reason we can't just like adjust this just so be gentle with your it's aquamarine. Just adjust it slightly. But no, I don't really mind it being a little bit bent up. Or like a little curvy there. Here's our final piece. And that kind of just glows. So you could do this with smaller beads. Like say you could do this like a 10 millimeter bead and then maybe some 11 O seed beads would be a great combo. Or maybe some two millimeter gems. Like maybe try out the two millimeter aquamarines we have instead of just the three and a halves. Because it'll have more of a subtle little cage look versus you can really see my lines on this bead. And then we just, yeah, we gotta finish it. This would be pretty if I put a little coin, if I wanna make them earrings, but I think I'll keep it, see how that feels for a bracelet. Sometimes things that are too large don't feel that good. I don't know. I'm going to leave that as is right now. We have made a connector that can become whatever you want it to be. And finished half of our necklace. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. I'm very pleased with how things came out. I hope you got a little bit of inspiration. So that's that could be the front of the necklace. Or that side which would be gorgeous as well where we really kind of get to see the shine of that kyanite all righty let's go ahead and wrap things up everyone thank you for joining us today a beaded bead indeed wanda um thanks you thanks you thank you for joining us today um I'm looking forward to meeting some of you at the whole bead show. We'll try to go live and say hello to everyone. And let's uh, let's let's start beading. Everyone, share what you make in gem chat. I try out one of these techniques. Share it to gem chat. I hope the the newer technique that we did here is the caged bead. So try that out. It also kind of looks like a little like hot air balloon sort of to me. Uh, I want to see that in more ways. So please try it and share. Even if it's just you make one connector, take a photo and share it. I really want to see. Tag me. Um, signing off for now. Thanks, everyone. Oh, I have announcements. Do you want to hear the announcements? Yes. <laughs> announcements. Announcements. <laughs> um, if you're watching today, you might as well be first to know about a few things. 
the probably the biggest one is that our bonus Christmas box pre-order is officially a go. So I'll send out more info about that pretty soon. But if you go to samsbeadbox.com, that little bonus box tab that we made now says bonus Christmas box. Um, now that the pre-order is done for the competition kit and we've had those out the door, um, it's time to start the pre-orders for the Christmas kit because we got to get this moving along so we can then get your Christmas boxes out to you later this month so you have time to then make before Christmas. Um, this idea was actually from someone in the community who wanted like a Halloween box when we're, we're talking about beadbox themes. And we don't typically do themes that match holidays. It feels a little bit too on the nose to me. But I still like the idea of those sorts of boxes. So they're happening as separate bonus boxes. There are Sam's bead boxes that are like limited limited editions. We're not making nearly as many of them. And you can order them through the beadbox website. So if you go to samsbeadbox.com and then click bonus Christmas box, Jesse has the direct link for you. You can pre-order your box. It has $40 of beads in it. It has garnet. It has lots of custom check glass. That was kind of the inspiration for it. We had Christmas trees custom plated for us in um, with some different check finishes. And we made a custom hex bead seed bead mix. It's going to have some really cool focals. We'll give you some more sneak peeks. This won't, won't, won't be as much of a mystery, but we might not, we might not tell you everything. But it has $40 of gorgeous beads, including like the Christmas tree beads that folks love in new colors that you've probably never seen before because we, we Rachel and I worked with them to come up with like basically new new options um, one of them is an AB white Rachel play, oh you can actually see them in the in the sneak peek photo so go snag your I want to call it the box of Christmas joy that's a better name I think I'll rename it <laughs> um, you can buy more than one if you like if you want to give one as a gift it'd be really lovely or you can get one and then like make it, it can be a fun project to do with family when they're over. You can make some like earrings and easy jewelry to wear at Christmas. So um, I think you're really gonna like the like the Christmas box. We we've already have most of the items here and we're just starting to bag it up. So we do have a li we are limited. So you can go ahead and pre-order it now, and then once we're done bagging it later this month, we will ship it off to you. All the details are on that. On that page so read all that up if you have any questions um you're not gonna if you are a big christmas person holiday person definitely you're gonna want one of these boxes the link is in the comments um it's also in below this video in the description or just go to samsbeadbox.com and click bo bonus christmas box that's the main announcement the other ones are smaller um, the competition kit is now available for purchase on the main website, samsbeadbox, samsbeadshop.com. Um, because the pre-order is now done, we have a couple dozen boxes left if you'd like to order one. And, oh, I guess the last thing was if you wanted any of the goodies that I showed today, like the Kyanite, I have that linked in this video as well. So that's plenty of announcements for now. I will see you, met some of you this weekend in person or virtually. Now we're signing off.